in response to the interest of the uh, video failed VMC demo with spin and Beechcraft Baron accident simulation, I wanted to put together a couple of clarifications. Some have pointed out correctly that in order to properly demonstrate the VMC, the simulated engine out should be windmilling. This windmilling, it creates flat plate drag if the engine is not feathered. In the Baron POH, it does outline the correct procedure for simulating zero thrust. The propeller knob is pulled back just forward of the detent. The manifold pressure is reduced to approximately 12 inches to simulate zero thrust. Using the simulator, I have attempted to simulate a left engine windmilling. Uh, like before, I slowed the plate down to VSSE and slowly increased the pitch while decreasing the indicated airspeed at one knot per second. Again, I failed to recover from the VMC demo correctly. Uh, instead of reducing thrust on the right engine at the first sign of loss of directional control, stall, or a buffet, I continue with aft yoke pressure until reaching and falling below the VMC to show a VMC roll. The asymmetric thrust coupled with the loss of the lift and the stall of the left wing and the rudder simultaneously induces yaw and an incipient spin. After the incipient spin, I reduce power to idle, maintain aileron neutral, rudder opposite the spin, and break the rudder stall. Uh, and you smoothly elevate back pressure on the yoke to pull out of the dive. And we see a loss of about a thousand feet. The instructive point here is remember that the practical VMC speed can change from the published VMC speed that's created during aircraft certification with respect to many parameters, including the center of gravity, takeoff weight, density, altitude, flaps, gear position, propeller flat plate drag versus a feathered propeller, vortex generators, uh, et cetera. So this brings me to the next point of the steps to identify the inoperative engine and feather the dead engine. Many have pointed out design flaws and loss of control below the VM speed as an intolerable risk to safe twin aircraft operation. Burt Rutan and many others have designed many twins with centerline thrust, pusher twins, asymmetric twins, diesel burning twin engines, etc. While successful in concept and simplicity of operation, most have failed to be commercially successful due to a lack of part support for a small fleet, noise and vibration issues, a lack of flaps or baggage compartments, and lack of magnetos. However, the 60-year-old twin-engine aircraft is inherently flawed with higher degree of user complexity. In the Baron POH, the proper procedure for handling an inoperative engine is to pitch for VYSC blue line, maintain directional control, forward control mixture, forward propeller control, forward manifold pressure, flaps up, gear up, identify the dead engine with dead foot dead engine, verify the dead engine by reducing manifold pressure on the dead foot side, feather the dead engine by, pr by pu pulling the propeller control lever into the detent, and now you've managed the emergency. I realize this is a lot to remember considering the startle effect, denial, resignation, the effect of adrenaline. Training and currency is the only method to guard against task saturation. If you can't maintain multi-engine currency, you really have no business in a multi-engine aircraft. Now that the engine is feathered, navigate to the nearest suitable landing site, communicate the need for emergency landing. Do not call ATC before you've feathered the dead engine. Aviate, navigate, communicate. After the engine is feathered, run the checklist for restarting securing the inoperative engine, secure the engine with mixture cut off, magnetos off, alternator off, fuel selector off. Using this home simulator, I've secured the critical engine and chosen the longest runway straight ahead of me. The runway, the rudder trim and rudder pedal will need to be adjusted with different power and pitch configurations. And it's important not to drop the gear and flaps until landing is assured. A dirty configuration will make a go round difficult or impossible. I decided to land with no flaps to maintain a higher indicated airspeed. If a go round is required, remember that you're still an emergency aircraft. You can select landing straight ahead off field or do left or right closed traffic. 
The pilot is not compelled to turn in any direction, even if the tower clears the turn. Do not turn into the dead engine. Turn in the direction of the center of thrust. I decided to do a go around using right close traffic to avoid turning into the left dead engine. If the flaps are down, do not attempt a go around. The climb rate will be poor on single engine and less than 500 feet, if even that. If you're geographically in a hot and high place, plan to go straight ahead. Land gear up to avoid a gear collapse on a soft field landing. With respect to a single engine go around, and be patient and wait for this uh, winged aircraft to climb up to the uh, traffic pattern. Do not feel compelled to prematurely turn back even if the tower clears your turn. Gently turn into the dead engine so to avoid wasting the vertical component of lift for the horizontal, horizontal component of lift. And expect a higher sink rate after you turn base to final. And do not drop the gear and flaps until landing is assured. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to show that you can maintain directional control and do a single engine landing, even with the critical engine out. And you can do a go around with no flaps, but um, it's important to, to remain competent. And, uh, you know, thank you for watching. Keep the blue side up.